relational operators or comparison operators as I call them is a way for us to compare values in a programming language. So let's just use a quick scenario. Let's say if you are equal, if your age is equal to 18, you should be allowed to drive. If your age is less than 18, you should not be allowed to drive. But also, if your age is greater than 18, you should be allowed to drive. This is how the programs check what's going on by using relational or comparison operators. So typically, again, going back to GCSE maths, let me zoom all the way in so it's super clear for everyone. First one we have is equal to, and in Python, to check if something is equal to something else, so directly equal, is going to be using the double equal sign. I'm going to show this in Python again, so not to worry. If we check if something is not equal, we use the exclamation and the equal sign. To check the value is less than something, we use the less than sign, obviously, so that's the left arrow. Greater than is going to be the right arrow. And for less than or equal to, we use the left arrow and the equal sign. For greater than or equal to, we use the right arrow and the equal sign. So that's those are the signs. That's how they work. Now let's jump over to Thunny and actually use them. First one we're going to make use of is the equal to. So let's create a couple of variables and check if they're equal or not equal. So Thunny, I'm going to call this one age one equals 20 age two equals 10, age three equals, oh, sorry, no space there, age three equals 20 as well. We're checking if things are equal again. We're going to simply do a quick print. So we're going to do print, we're going to do age one equals age two. Now what this should say, this should say true or false. This should say if age one is equal to age two, true. If it's not equal, false. That's what should happen. So I'm going to press run now on my keyboard, F5. And there we go. That's false because age one is equal to 20. Age two is equal to 10. That's false. They're not equal. Let's do another one. Let's do print print age one equals age, did I do three? No, age three. This one should work because age one is 20. Age three is 20. So that should give me a true value. So I'm going to press F5 again. And there we go, false and true. This is how we check. So imagine you're the person writing a website or writing a program for uh, the police licensing department to check if someone is legally able to drive. And you check their license, you put the details of the license in and it works out the age. And you know, or your system knows that 21 or 18, whatever the driving age is, is the age that people are allowed to drive. So if your age is not equal to 20, you should not be able to drive. You should not be able to get into a club. You should not be able to buy alcohol, whatever the case is. Now, there are a lot more comparison operators which make a lot more sense, but that was just a quick scenario. Next, I'm going to add actually my comment here. This is um, equal to EQUAL equal to check. Now, this next one, not equal to is going to be more or less the opposite of equal to. So I'm going to do more or less the same thing here. Let me just copy that because I want to be lazy. Print that and where it says equal to, I'm going to change age one, not equal to age three and age one, not equal to age two. This first one, because they are not equal, this should say true, but they're not equal. So you're saying, are they equal? No. Okay, you're correct. That's what it's saying. And for age one, not equal to age three, this should say false. There we go. True and false. Oh, let me separate these actually. So let me do another print here just because I want this to look pretty. Put quotes there, backslash N, run this again. And there we have our space. So this is for the second one that says not equal to. So maybe what I should do is put equal to at the top. So print in quotes, E-Q-U-A-L equal to, then I put quotes here and I put a backslash N and I put copy this, move it down here after my comment and I put here not equal to, run this one more time. Here we go. We have age one not equal to age two, that's true. Age one not equal to age three, that's false because they are equal. That's why that works. The next one we're going to have is less than so L-E-S-S -S, then, and I am going to copy this 
and make use of it because I don't want to retype it. So let's just say less than. And under here, I'm going to use the same values again. So let me just copy everything actually. Paste that there, age one less than age two and age one less than age three. Maybe do age three less than age two as well. So print age three less than age one, something like that, or age two, whatever works. Now, when I run this, I don't remember what the age values are. So if age one is less than age two, that should be true. If age one is less than age three, that should be true. If age one is age three is less than age two, that should be true. But if any one of those things are not correct, it should be false. So let's remove some space from here and let's run this program now. Here we go. Less than all are false because age one is actually 20. So let's change age one now to let's change that to 100. No, let's change that to something like one. So so at least one of them should be true. When I run this at five, here we go. True, true, false. Age three is not less than age two because age two is 10. Age three is 20. So age three is actually greater than. So basic comparison operators. Let me just go to the next one straight away. So this one is going to be greater than. I'm going to copy all of this stuff again and I'm going to just paste it under here and change things around. So I'm going to just say greater than here greater than age one, greater than age one, greater than age three, greater than let's change one of these numbers up here to maybe 100. Right now, I'm going to say 100 when I press run greater than true, true, true. Everything is true. Let's just change a random number here. Let's make this maybe one point. Let's make this one again. When I press F5 false, true, true. These are very, very simple. And what I actually like to do when writing my program is not just figure out what these values are, but come in and print the values themselves. So when your programs get really long and you're using Funny and Python and Raspberry Pi, Pico and all of that stuff, you might be getting slightly overwhelmed. So it's always a good idea to come in and print the actual values. So what I might do for this first one here is put the comma there and I might do age one and I might put another comma and I might do age, what, what was the other one? Age uh, two. Now, when I run this, it's going to print the values first, then it's going to print the comparison whether it's true or false. So when I press F5, I get one and 10. That's false because one is not greater than 10. That's why I could put the whole thing and I could make this so that I have the greater than sign and all of that, but that's going to be long. I don't want to do that right now. So next one we have is age one and age three. So in here, I'm going to put age one comma age three. This is greater than right. It's checking if age one is greater than age three. When I run that again, oh, made a mistake. Well, I left out the comma. I thought I typed it. There we go. F5, eight, one and 20. That's false. Now the last one, put the cursor at the beginning, age three comma age uh, two comma again. Now, when I run this f 5, 20 is definitely greater than 10. That's why it's a true. So maybe it's a good idea sometimes to print the values because this started to get overwhelmed because I had to keep scrolling back to the top and keep looking down and keep figuring out what the numbers are. But this way, I don't have to guess. There's no guesswork. I can just put the values in and also print out the comparison value, true or false. Next, we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So let's do less than first, less than or equal to. And the way that works, again, I'm going to do the same values again, because I'm lazy. Let's you actually copy this one here. Copy, paste down here, and put loads of space in between it so it doesn't get too confusing for people. This is all separate stuff. All right, so I'm saying less than or equal to. So I'm going to change this greater than sign here to less than or equal to. Same thing for here, less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Now the less than or equal to sign, it does two checks in one, just like in GCSE maths where you had to compare if a value is less than or equal to. So if you're greater than or equal to or less than or equal to a number, you both things must be true at the same time. So basic example. 
you are 18 and you must be 18 or older to be able to drive so we're going to check your age now so we're going to say if age is equal to or greater than 18 you're allowed to drive so you're 18 you're good your mom is 40 she's good dad's 40 he's good younger brother or younger sister they're 16 so they should not be good because we say you must be greater than or you must be equal to a specific age so now when i run this f5 to run greater than oh i need to change this uh need, need to change this to less than or equal to less than or equal to bear with me one sec or equal to now run this now here we go normal values nothing special so let me copy this for greater than or equal to as well it's going to change things around nothing special here so greater than backslash n i need that one still greater than or equal to and i'm just going to change the sign around greater than greater than greater than now when i run this f5 there are our values run again see nice and simple now where i'm going to use this is when we get to the if statements when we get to selection i'm going to make heavy use of these comparison operators all this video was supposed to show you guys how to do is how to use the syntax of the comparison operators how to actually get the values that you desire i will put this code on the website as well so when the website is up and running you can go there and you can find this code you can download it yourself you can run it you can copy it into ripple it should work for all of those things because once you're using python 3 and above well python 3.0 and above everything should work fine hopefully that was useful but again this was supposed to only show you how to actually use these things when we get to selections using if statements and stuff like that that's when we're going to make proper use of these things where we can compare multiple values compare multiple ages of people to see if some if someone is able to drive if someone's not able to drive so on and so forth